BBC News at midday. The Chief Constable of Police Scotland has acknowledged that institutional racism and discrimination exists within the force. Sir Ian Livingston, who's standing down from his role, said there needed to be changes in recruitment, vetting and the handling of cases of misconduct. Sir Ian said it was necessary to acknowledge the reality in order to bring about reform. It is right for me, it's a right thing to do for me as Chief Constable, to clearly state that institutional racism, sexism, misogyny and discrimination exist. Police Scotland is institutionally racist and discriminatory. New figures show that net migration reached record levels last year, with 606,000 people added to the UK population. That's up from nearly half a million in 2021. The Office for National Statistics said the rise was driven by the lifting of Covid restrictions and international conflict. The majority of people were from outside the EU, with a significant number coming from Ukraine and Hong Kong. Speaking in the Commons, the Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick, admitted the figure was far too high, but said new rules banning many foreign students from bringing family members with them would help bring it down. Universities should be in the education business, not the immigration business. We expect this package to have a tangible impact on net migration. Taken together with the easing of temporary factors, like our exceptional humanitarian offers, We expect net migration to fall to pre-pandemic levels in the medium term. But Labour's Shadow Home Secretary Vet Cooper said there was a gap between the government's rhetoric on immigration and reality. Today's extraordinary figures, including doubling the number of work visas since the pandemic, show that the Conservatives have no plan and no grip on immigration. They show the chaos in this government. Work visas are up 119% since before the pandemic. Conservatives have totally failed to tackle endemic skills shortages and get people back to work. Households in England, Wales and Scotland who use an average amount of gas and electricity and pay by direct debit are to see their bills fall slightly. The energy regulator has set the new price cap for typical households at £2,074, a fall of around £400 but still much higher than before the Ukraine conflict. Elizabeth Blakelock from Citizens Advice said while the fall was welcome, it didn't address real problems facing many people. We've already helped more people this year because they're struggling to top up their prepayment meters. It was double from what it was last year. And if you look back at 2020, it's 10 times the number of people who couldn't top up their prepayment meter. We absolutely need to look again to make sure that the cost of living crisis has support from the government. Kate Mulvaney from the consultancy group Cornwall Insight, which has been monitoring the global energy market, said the next 12 months could see price rises. The energy markets are international, so uh, if there's a a very cold winter ahead of us across Europe, that's going to drive up prices in lots of places, including the United Kingdom. So for the rest of this year, we think that uh, it's it's unlikely that there's going to be any further substantial falls um, and prices could rise uh, in the winter period. The German economy, the biggest in Europe, has slid into recession after contracting by 0.3% in the first quarter of the year. Officials had expected zero growth, but revised figures show the economy continued to shrink because high prices led to reduced household spending. The pop group ABBA have ruled out a reunion at next year's Eurovision Song Contest in their native Sweden. The event will mark 50 years since they won the competition performing Waterloo. But speaking to the BBC, Bjorn Olveus and Benny Andersson emphatically rejected any suggestion they'd take to the stage again. BBC News.